Today, we'll be talking about brain herniations. We'll basically talk about uncle herniation. However, we'll touch in brief about other types of brain herniation too. And we'll also discuss an easy mnemonic to remember the clinical features of the uncle herniation. So let's begin. Brain herniation refers to displacement of brain tissue by an intracerebral or overlying mass into a contiguous compartment that it normally does not occupy. Brain herniation can be broadly divided into four types uncle herniation, central herniation, transfalcial herniation, and foraminal herniation. We'll talk about uh, central, transfalcial, and foraminal herniation in the brief and we'll discuss in more detail about uncle herniation. So central herniation is a symmetric movement of the thalamic structures through the tentorial opening with compression of the upper midbrain uh, as indicated by letter B in this picture. Patients usually present with meiotic pupils and drowsiness and these are the heralding signs and these signs help us to differentiate central herniation from the uncus herniation because in uncle herniation there is unilateral enlarged pupil whereas meiotic pupils and drowsiness are the important features in central transtentorial herniation. Next type of herniation is transfalcial herniation where there is displacement of this simulated gyrus indicated by C under the fax and across the midline causing the symptoms. Next type is foraminal herniation. Uh, in this condition there is a downward forcing of the cerebellar tonsil into the foramen magnus is this uh, is indicated by picture d yes, sorry letter d uh, in this condition there is early compression of the medulla leading to the respiratory arrest and the death so now let's talk about uncle transtentorial herniation uh, in this condition there is a uh, impaction of the anterior medial temporal gyrus yuncus is indicated by letter a in this picture into the tentorial opening just anterior to and adjacent to the midbrain leading to the compression of the midbrain and the surrounding structures which causes various types of the symptoms so it's a life-threatening neurological emergency and any condition causing significant rise in icp like intracranial bleed or intracranial space occupying lesion can cause uncle herniation so now let's uh, talk in brief about the features of impending uncle herniation. The symptoms are basically the symptoms of the increased intracranial pressure which include headache, nausea, vomiting and altered mental status. In addition to that, uh, we can uh, demonstrate the signs of increased intracranial pressure like we can find causing stride which is the combination of hypertension, bradycardia and irregular respiration or apnea. Now, let's discuss the mnemonic uh, which will help us to remember the clinical features of uncle herniation easily. The mnemonic goes like this. Uncle's hemiparetic babe in coma had dilated pupil where uncle is for uncle herniation. Hemiparetic is for either contralateral or ipsilateral hemiparesis. Babe is for Babinski sign. In is for infarction of anterior and posterior cerebral artery. Coma is for coma itself, head is for hydrocephalus and dilated pupil is for dilated ipsilateral pupil which is the first sign of uncle herniation. So now we'll briefly talk about the causes of these clinical findings. The contralateral hemiparesis occurs because of the underlying lesions like intracranial bleed or the intracranial space occupying lesions. Similarly, ipsilateral hemiparesis can occur in cases of the uncle herniation because of the compression of the contralateral cerebral peduncle by the laterally uh, by the lateral displacement of the brain tissue. This is a false localizing sign and it's also known as Cornohan-Oltman sign. In addition to this, 
patient can present with either apsilateral or contralateral Babinski sign because of the compression of the cerebral peduncles again. Similarly, patient will present with the infarction of the anterior and the posterior cerebral artery because these arteries also uh, travel through the, this area and due to the lateral displacement of the midbrain which contains a reticular activating system against the opposite tentorial edge by the displaced oncus or the parahippocampal gyrus will lead to uh, damage to the reticular activating system leading to the coma. Similarly, due to the entrapment of the various portions of the ventricular system by the herniation, hydrocephalus can present. Uh, similarly, when that oncus herniates through the tentorial foramen, it compresses the third cranial nerve is that nerve traverses the soft arachnoid space leading to the ipsilateral dilatation of the pupil. This is a first sign and very important sign of the uncle herniation. I hope uh, you are benefited by this video. Thank you so much for watching.